So my story starts in Atlanta, Georgia. A little kid, Stone Mountain to be exact. Um, growing up in Atlanta was very magical. Um, I always say, like being a young black kid growing up in Atlanta, it kind of showed me like anything is possible in the world because being surrounded by so many examples of like excellence and just success, it really instilled in me like I could accomplish anything in the world that I wanted to. Um, so I've always kind of kept that close to my heart growing up. And anything I wanted to go after, I always felt confident that I could accomplish it. So yeah, that was kind of like my beginning. And that's kind of like the faith I was born with. So growing up, I was always a very artistic kid. I tried everything like music and tried the saxophone, piano, drums, even though I wasn't good at any of it. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to like explore all my creative interests early on in life. But as a kid, even though music wasn't my interest, I loved architecture. And I was like seven, eight years old, drawing floor plans, designing houses. And this is some of those floor plans that I did as a kid. Like I thought I wanted to grow up and like, you know, be an architect. That didn't pan out because I ended up not liking that. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I've always loved architecture and that kind of birth a interest in photography. So my mom and I, we would always hang out on the weekend in Atlanta. We would go around the city. She would let me, we would just like go around the city and hang out. And I would always just take pictures of just like buildings and the graffiti and just everything that made Atlanta like Atlanta. Um, and this was around the same time that Tumblr was like very big around 2014, 2015. So I would always edit it in just like very cool ways and just post it. Um, and my mom, she picked up on this. Like I always say she's seen my interest in photography before I even seen it. So she picked up on this. And when I turned 16, my mom got me my first camera for my birthday. That's kind of where it took off. And she took me to the back counter and she was like, I have an order. The guy brought out a camera and I'm like looking at her and I'm looking at the guy and I'm like, what is like, what is this? That was the first time like she ever bought me anything that expensive. So I was kind of like mind blown. And yeah, she got me that camera. And I'm not gonna lie, it sat until like I was like a junior and a senior in high school. So slowly but surely, I started using my camera and I started to take photos of like my friends around high school. I would take their graduation photos, prom photos. I, would, I had a job as well. I used to work at Chick-fil-A, my favorite restaurant. <laughs> and my mom, she would take me downtown because I had to do shoots. Um, and yeah, like I kind of just like built my name in Atlanta or in my high school by taking photos of like my friends like that. So then I graduated high school and I went to college. I went to Georgia State. Um, went in as a business major. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I ended up switching my major because I didn't want to take accounting. So I switched my major to political science pre-law. Um, but even in college, you know, I wasn't in any clubs. I didn't really know a lot of people. Um, and I was like bored. I was bored. So I started taking photos of like people from around my college. And I would meet people on campus and be like, hey, let's do a shoot. You know, we're a bunch of kids. We didn't have no money. So we had to be creative. So we would go to the thrift store, anything, and just like come up with ideas for photo shoots. And I would say that's kind of where my story with photography pivoted. Time went on and I started sharpening my skills. I was self-teaching myself photography. I ended up in the midst of the pandemic. I purchased a film camera and my work, it was already pretty strong on digital, but I felt like transitioning to a new medium such as film, it showed me to slow down my process and be more intentional with the stories I was telling and the photos I wanted to make, basically. And that's when I built the foundation of my work, 2020 in Atlanta. I just wanted to explore all my creative abilities. Um, and then summer came, 
and everything that was just going on in the world. For example, the Black Lives Matter movement. But I knew I wanted to create work that reminded community or my people that, you know, we're beautiful, we're strong, and, you know, like, we're, like, Black is beautiful, basically. So it's my work on that. And these are this that I created during the year of 2020. And then summer ended, school started back, and I just was not feeling school. Wasn't feeling school at all. I was, I remember the day, well, I went, my favorite class I was looking forward to taking film and dark room. And it just was like, that's not it. It wasn't hidden. So <laughs> I went home, I sat in my room for like a few hours, and then I was like, I think I want to move to New York. And I had already made up in my mind, regardless of like what happened, I was going to do it. Because to me, it was more than just moving to New York. To me, it was, I just show myself that it's possible to follow my own dream. And even though it was hard, like actually, it was hard for me to like take that big of a risk to do that. I knew that in the end, it'll pay off. So the day I moved to New York, I'll never forget, <laughs> my mom, she was taking me to the airport and that was the most silent car ride I've ever been in. And we were riding to Hartsfield Jackson, going up um, to my terminal and I just started to hear my mom, she was sniffling. But I think deep down she knew she had to let me go so that I can go and spread my wings and flourish. So I moved to New York, 2020. Anytime I tell anyone that, they look at me like I'm like out of this world. They were like, why would you do that? And I'm like, cheap rent. <laughs> really, like it was the perfect time to move to a city like New York. Um, and I went to New York with tunnel vision. Like I knew what I wanted to do. I knew the career I wanted to have. And I did not let anything get in my way. Before I moved, I sent hundreds of emails to the editors, publications, anybody I wanted to work with. I sent my publication out, code emailed, even though I didn't get any response. But I still went, and I was dead set on accomplishing every dream that I had in mind. Um, and yeah, it was like slowly but surely, as I got more comfortable in New York, I started shooting more. But you know, as I got more settled in New York, it came a period where it was like I almost hit a roadblock. I didn't really know what was going on. I was second guessing, like, did I really, you know, was this a smart answer? And I remember March of 2021 calling my mom, boohoo crying. And I'm like, mom, I don't know. I'm like, I think I have to come back home. It was just so much going on. And I was like, I remember telling her, I was like, I feel like if I come home, I feel like I failed myself. Cause I risked so much to move to New York and follow my dreams. And like, it, very, it meant something more to me. And by the grace of God, I stayed in New York and to this day, I'm so glad I did that because the opportunities that I was able to come by being there really changed my career. Um, but yeah, I stayed and I ended up, I was working at this camera place and you would think me being a photographer working at a camera place, it'll be the most amazing job. I hated it. <laughs> I did not like the job. It was taking me away from photography and I just looked at it and I'm like, the money that I'm making every two weeks at this job, I could be making in about four hours from a shoot. So that's the way I thought of it. I was like, oh. so I saved up more money and then I quit. And from that day, I never looked back. And I'm so big on my faith and I'm so big on just like believing that God would just like open doors for you. When I quit, I had consistent work all the way up until I got signed. And at the end of 2021, I woke up one day out of the blue. And I checked my email. Uh, congratulations, you've been named on Forbes 30 under 30. And I almost froze. And I'm like, why? Like, how? who is watching me? Like, that's how it felt. Like, why? <laughs> I just, you know, to me, I'm just like a kid from Atlanta. I'm just up here shooting. 
And then being in New York, there's so many other photographers and just, I guess I was second guessing myself again. And I just had to remember like, you're different. Like you, you're creating something that not a lot of people could create. Like everyone is unique in their own way. But I think the reason I really stood out was a kid from the South shooting in New York. I have a unique style and the way I photograph subjects is just, it's very emotional. I like to center emotion in a lot of my work. So I had to, I had to remind myself that of that. Um, but I say all of this to say, never second guess yourself in life. And if it's a point where you wanna, you know, risk it and just follow your heart, then do that. Because you're the one that's in charge of your own destiny. And Mom, I'm so grateful for you because I know all the sacrifices you had to make raising me as a single parent and just pushing me to do my best. But yeah, that's kind of like how I'm here. <laughs> and then after Forest 30 Under 30, leading up until now, I've been so grateful and blessed with the opportunity to sign with an amazing, with an amazing agency who's able to book me the jobs that I've dreamt of, such as campaigns and covers and shooting with some of my favorite people. But I think deep down, although I'm appreciative of all of that, it'll always go back to me just like wanting to highlight my, the beauty of my community because being a little kid, looking through Vogue and looking on TV and seeing the fashion ads in New York or in LA, I never seen people who looked like me. But yeah, that's how I got here. <laughs> Thank you.